Lofty and Wendy join the crew. Bob and the gang have so much fun. Working together, they get the job done. Bob the Builder, can we fix it? Bob the Builder, yes we can. Pilchard and Bird, Travis and Spud, playing together like good friends should. Bob the Builder, can we fix it? Bob the Builder, yes we can. <laughs> Oh, hello. Bob the Builder here. Mrs Bentley has a very special job for us to do. We're going to fix Mr Bentley's old train set so that Mrs Bentley can give it to him for his birthday. <laughs> 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 there. What does everyone think? I like it. It's really cool. Oh, but it's all broken, Bob. You can fix it, though, can't you, Bob? No problem, Rolly. Would you like to see a film of real trains and tracks? Yeah! Rock and roll! Oh, yeah, I think so. Then take a look at this film. <laughs> trains aren't like cars. Cars travel on roads, but trains, like this one, travel on rail track. Rail track has to have solid foundations. These foundations are called sleepers. Sleepers are made from concrete, which is poured into moulds. The concrete dries and becomes very hard and strong inside the moulds. Then the sleepers are all cut to exactly the same size. On site, the new rail track is dropped into place inside the old track. The track replacement train removes the old track and replaces it with the new. It also digs up old wooden sleepers. This special machine collects the new concrete sleepers. The new sleepers fall into place one by one. Then the new track is placed on top of the sleepers. Next, the track is secured using metal clips. Each clip is made secure. Finally, the gravel is laid and flattened around the track and it's ready for the first train to use it. The best place to start is with a good foundation, Lofty. Just like the foundations we built in Sunflower Valley. Take a look at this film. The team helped me build lots of different foundations in Sunflower Valley, like this house extension. First of all, Scoop and Muck dug out lots of earth. The earth was loaded into Muck's back bucket and taken away. Then Dizzy poured cement into the foundations to make them really strong. These railway sleepers let Dizzy cross the wet cement before it dried. Scoop and Muck and Dizzy and Rolly, Lofty and Wendy were always there to help. We worked as a team, marking out the foundations, digging the earth, getting the foundations ready so that Dizzy could pour in the cement. I liked laying bricks. And Lofty liked laying floors. It's fun working as a team. Everyone has a special job, something they're really good at. Do you remember what jobs there were? Marking out? Digging the earth? Pouring in cement and laying bricks. The team also built the foundation for my new caravan home. Everyone helped, even Travis. 
I think we're a great team. Foundations are important, aren't they, Bob? That's right, Rolly. But there's a lot more to laying tracks than just foundations. There are three stages when you're laying train track. The first stage is the foundation. We'll need Dizzy and Lofty for that. The second stage is construction, where the railroad tracks are laid. The third stage is completion, where the job is finished and everything is cleaned up. Vroom, vroom. Hello, little truck. Vroom, 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 vroom. You want to help? Vroom, 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 vroom. Hmm. There's nothing to do yet, little vroom. truck, because Lofty vroom, and Dizzy are working on the first stage. Vroom. Now, stage one. Do you remember what that is? That's right, it's a foundation. The first things to prepare for the foundation are the concrete sleepers. They're like foundations that go under the track. Sleepers are made in moulds just like these. Metal bars are fitted to make the sleepers very strong. Next, the moulds are filled with concrete, just like Dizzy is doing here. There, the foundation's finished. Now it's time for the second stage, construction. Oh, hello again, little truck. You'd like to help with the construction? Well, there's nothing for you to do right now, little truck. Yes, little truck, I'm sure there'll be something for you to do very soon. The first thing to do with construction is to get rid of the old rail spikes that hold the rail track in place. Next, Lofty removes the old track. Well done, Lofty. The old track is taken away. Then the old wooden sleepers are taken away. The ground has to be rolled out and pressed down flat. Then Lofty lays down the brand new sleepers. And the new rail track is laid. The tracks are welded together. Welding sticks them together by using heat. Then the rails are secured with special metal clips. Just one more thing to add now. It's a level crossing, which is the place where cars and people cross the track. That's stage two finished. The third stage is the completion. All the old track and the rail spikes go to be recycled. Hello, little truck. Don't look so sad. Um, I've got a job for you. Vroom, vroom. We've just built a brand new level vroom, crossing vroom, vroom. and it needs someone to try it out. Vroom. Yes, little truck. That's you. Vroom. So, that's how we lay rail track. These films are really cool, Bob. Ooh. Can we see some more? No problem, everyone. I'm going to fix this track in the workshop and you can go on site. Do you remember the first stage? It's foundations. Cars travel on roads. Boats travel on water. But trains travel on rail track. Rail track needs really good foundations because trains are really heavy. The foundations for rail track are concrete sleepers. They're made in a big factory, just like this one. This machine is preparing the sleeper moulds with a special spray. Then, really strong bolts are dropped into the moulds. They'll fasten the sleepers to the rail track. This wire will help make the concrete sleepers strong. It's laid out in long lines before being dropped into the moulds. Every wire is checked to make sure it's in exactly the right place. Now, this big truck has something very important to deliver. The truck's stopping here to empty its load. Have you guessed what it is yet? That's right! It's a sand and gravel mix, which is carried on this conveyor into the factory. The last of the truck's load is emptied out. Look how quickly it's moving on the conveyor. It's very fast, isn't it? It takes the sand and gravel to a really big mixer. Then water and cement are added. Everything is given a really good stir until it's ready. The liquid concrete is poured into the moulds. 
this will take some time because there are lots of molds to be filled and each one has to be filled right to the top. Just by pressing a few buttons, the driver can make sure that every last drop of concrete is used. Then it's smoothed out. Now we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of finished concrete sleepers. This machine has to cut the sleepers into just the right length. Wow! That saw must be very sharp. There. Four more brand new sleepers. Just a few finishing touches as special plates and clips are added that will hold the track to the sleepers. All these sleepers are ready to be delivered. This giant crane loads them onto railway trucks. Even though it's a very big crane, it only needs one control to lift and move the sleepers very carefully onto the trucks. But the job's not finished yet, because there are lots more sleepers waiting to be loaded. So, that's the first stage. I know what the second stage is, Bob. It's construction! <laughs> <laughs> You're both right. Brilliant! This is the track renewal train. It's very big, isn't it? Its job is to take up the old track and lay down the new. Here's a big crane. It's very clever because it can lift itself onto the rail track. Then it lifts the new rail track into position, ready to be laid. The driver controls everything from inside his cab. See how the crane moves along the track, pulling in the rail little by little. Each length of track is welded together. Welding is just like gluing it together. But first, they have to cut the track to make sure there are no rough edges. Then the welding can begin. To make the joint strong, they have to make the welding material very hot. When it's cooled down, the weld is made nice and smooth, just like that. The track renewal train is built to do lots of different jobs. Can you see it's moving all the old rail track out of the way? Then it pulls out the old wooden sleepers. The old sleepers are moved on a conveyor, ready to be taken away. Next, out come all the spikes that held the sleepers in place. Any really damaged sleepers are pulled out of the train and left next to the track waiting to be recycled. Here are some more old sleepers. They're ready to be recycled too. Just watch this gantry. It actually runs on the track renewal train. See? It's taking the old sleepers right to the end of the train. Let's travel with it, shall we? Whoa! This is great! See how the machine stops in exactly the right place to drop off the old sleepers? The machine unloads the old sleepers. watch. The machine reverses back down the track, but only as far as some of the new concrete sleepers. 
the new sleepers are lifted on board, ready to be taken back to the front of the train. OK, let's go. Ha-ha! Travelling on trains is fun. As the new sleepers arrive, they're unloaded onto the train's conveyor. Can you see? The new sleepers replace the old as they're dropped in one by one. Everyone works very hard until all the old sleepers are replaced. they can finish laying the brand new track. This digger has a very special job. It's using its grab to dig up an old level crossing. None of the timbers are wasted. All of them will be taken away and recycled. The digger is very strong, so digging up these timbers is easy. No problem. Well done. Next, this tractor cuts a hole where the new level crossing will be. With a big saw like this, the job won't take long. It's cutting through the ground very quickly. There. Finished. This level crossing is made from concrete and then covered in asphalt. Asphalt is black and sticky. When it's rolled out, it dries very hard. Asphalt helps make the level crossing strong because cars and trucks will be driving over it every day. Just one or two final touches and the rail track and the level crossing will be ready to use. the track in place and the second stage finished. Can you remember what comes third? You're right! Completion! It takes lots of very big machines to lay rail track. This one is great because it can run on track as well as on the road. Its job's done now, so it's getting out of the way before other machines arrive. We'll see those in a moment. The first job is to make the track secure. Can you see what's happening? The track has been lifted and clips put in place. Then the track is lowered back onto the clip. Here's another big machine. It has a special job. It tightens the clips to the track. Even though the machine does a good job of tightening most of the clips, sometimes one might need just a little bit more tightening. It's best to do that with a big hammer. Now, when that's done, the side of the track has to be cleared of all the old damaged wooden sleepers. They'll be recycled. Then the old metal spikes and clips are tidied up using a really big magnet. This magnet has electricity going through it, which makes it very powerful, so it can pick up the old metal nobody wants anymore. Then, it's taken away to be recycled. Next, gravel is spread onto the side of the track. The gravel will help support the rails and sleepers. A lot of gravel is needed to do a good job. 
Behind the gravel train is another big machine. Can you see what it is? That's right, it's a digger. Its job is to spread out the gravel. Using these levers and dials, the driver can clear the track very quickly. Then it's the turn of this machine. It's just like a big bulldozer. It flattens the gravel inside and outside the rail track. Now it's the turn of the giant sweeper. It clears the track of loose rocks. Everything is tidied up around the rail track, even loose earth. First of all, it's scooped up and spread out next to the track. Then it's flattened using this special metal plate. There's a lot of track to tidy up before the job's finished. Now, can you guess what this machine is doing? If you look closely, you can see. It's squashing down the gravel and making sure the sleepers and track are both level. When this job is complete, the brand new track will be ready. There, all finished. Now we can take a train ride. Come on, everyone, let's go! Model train is all right. These children think trains are very special too. <laughs> In fact, they think trains are so special they're going to build one of their own. Can you see? They've got card and glue and coloured pens. This train is going to look fantastic. If you're cutting card, it's best to use special safety scissors so that you don't cut yourself. You can use all sorts of coloured paper to decorate your train, like green, or really bright yellow, or red. This card has hearts on it. It's fun to stick things on cards too. Squares or circles or triangles like this. Cutting out. Colouring in and sticking things on are fun too, as long as you make sure things are really stuck. Just like that. Cardboard boxes make great trains and carriages. You can glue your coloured paper to the side of your box. That's right. Perfect. Then paint it any way you like, with yellow squiggles or curvy red lines. You can even decorate your box with cotton wool. There, finished. Time to get the passengers on board. This train is ready to roll. <laughs> are the little sheep getting on the train, Bob? No, Lofty. Sheep are the sorts of things you see from a train. What do you think you might see out of the window of a train? These children think they know what they'd see. <laughs> These children are making a big picture of the things they might see from a train. What do you think might be in that car? What do you think this could be? Ah, I know what this is. But do you? A cotton wool ball and some glue. Yes, I know what this is too. Have you guessed yet? The children think you can see lots of animals from a train. Animals that you'd see on a farm, like cows with big horns. And sheep in a field eating lots of lovely green grass. That must be the farmer driving his car. And the farmer's wife sitting behind him. There's also a big barn on this farm. Would you see the same things from your train? Oh, here's another puzzle. What are the children doing? 
They're drawing something, but it's not a house or a fence. What could it be? Hmm. I think I know what it is. Let's take a closer look. Aha! That looks like a railway sleeper. So this must be rail track. And there's the train. All aboard. Woo! Woo! Do you know any rhymes about trains? I know one. It goes like this. Here's a little train. Here it's whistle blow. Happy little train, chugging to and fro. Up and down a track, all around the town. Happy little train, chugging up and down. Here's a little train. Here it's whistle blow. Say it with me now. Woo, woo, woo. Mr. Bentley will love his new train set, won't he, Bob? That's right, Rolly, because Mr. Bentley loves trains. Do you remember that time when we constructed that new train track? All the team were there, and Wendy was in charge. The track was very, very old and had to be replaced. Lofty took away the old rails, and Muck took the old sleepers. Mr. Bentley inspected the work, making Lofty nervous. Careful, Lofty. Oh, I do hope he doesn't drop that rail. That's it. Slowly now. Well done, Lofty. In fact, well done, everyone. Mr Bentley isn't the only one who likes trains. My dad, Robert, loves riding on trains. He takes a picnic to enjoy while the train rushes past trees and fields, chugging along the track in and out of tunnels. He even asked me to build him a toy train just like the one Wendy and I built for Mr Bentley. Dizzy helped us make paper mache. That's paper and paste all mixed up. We made all sorts of things with paper mache, like hills and houses. After that, we laid the track, then some things you'd see from a train like these cows. Mr. Bentley loved his train set. He couldn't wait to get it going. Mrs. Bentley even found him an engine driver's hat. The train set was a great success. Happy birthday, Mr. Bentley. Hooray! Thank you, Bob. I think this is a good time to remind us of everything we've learned. Ready, Rolly? Ready to rock and ra ha ha ha! On site, on site, let's go on site. We're building train track every day. We build it strong and build it right. So trains can run without delay. First make the sleepers good and strong. With steel and concrete can't go wrong. Pour in the concrete just enough to make those sleepers really tough. On site, let's go on site. Just look at how we build the track. Our special train goes up and back. Bring in the new, take out the old. The track looks brilliant. Rock and roll on site. Let's go on site. We clear the track and then we're done. Oh, come and look now, everyone. We built a train track strong and true. So trains can run for me and you. On site, on site. Let's go on site. We're building train track every day. We build it strong and build it right So trains can run without delay <laughs> oh, hooray! Thanks for coming on site with me today. I hope you had a great time. And if you want to see some films about building tree houses, keep watching. Bye, everyone.
Hello, Bob the Builder here. Farmer Pickles has asked Lofty and I to move this tree. It fell over during the storm last night and has blocked the road. Oh, oh look, Bob! Little squirrels! This tree must have been their home. Do squirrels live in trees then, Bob? Not just squirrels, Lofty. Birds live in trees, and some people build houses in trees too. Really, Bob? That's right, Lofty. There are lots of films about tree houses back at the homestead. If we go back, I can show you what I mean. Oh, what about the little squirrels, Bob? They haven't got a home now. We'll take them with us, Lofty. That fallen tree has given me an idea for building them a new home. Come on. Yes, and soon they'll have a brand new home too. Oh, rock and roll! I can make something out of that fallen tree, so we'd better go and fetch it, Lofty. Oh, right, oh, Bob. Would you like to know how a tree house is built? Just watch this film. The first stage of building a tree house is preparation. This design shows exactly how it will look when it's finished. Then a tree trunk is chosen. It has to be strong, as the tree house will be built on top of it. The trunks are very big, so it takes a forklift truck to move them about. The chosen trunk is cut to size. It's a very difficult job, so it's best to wear a hard hat and special protective trousers. What do you think is happening now? That's right. The centre of the tree trunk is being cut out. It's nearly ready to be the base for the tree house. The second stage is construction. This tree house has wooden walls and a wooden roof. All the wood is painted with special paint called preservative. This will help make it waterproof. Before the treehouse is complete, a window has to be added. Then tiles are put on the roof, just like a real house. The third stage is completion. The crane is taking the treehouse outside, where its big arm drops it onto the tree trunk base. Next, they add some steps. And finally, a super slide which makes the tree house into a real fun house. I'm going to make this tree house very special, Lofty. And really different. Yes, we're used to building different types of houses. We built all sorts of different ones in Sunflower Valley. Remember? First of all, there was Mr Bentley's special eco-home. There was a lot of work to do, but everyone helped. Even Benny lent a hand. Mr Bentley's home was special because it was built into the side of a hill. We used lots of wooden planks for the walls, then covered them in special plastic to make them waterproof. Next, we built a wall of bricks. Dizzy poured concrete for the floor, and Lofty delivered inner walls. Bit by bit and little by little, the new house took shape. We all worked very hard. Lofty fitted the windows, Wendy and I fitted the doors. We covered the roof in lots of turf and solar panels to save energy and make it a real eco-home. Another really different building was Mr Beasley's yurt. A yurt is made from wood and canvas and it's like a tent. Mr Beasley still lives in it in Sunflower Valley. My friend Sandy Beach wanted to have a house built in a cave, so the team got to work, building it with recycled rocks. 
Lofty and I finished the outside together. Then I worked inside building a wooden floor from recycled wood. Sandy was very pleased when I'd finished. So I fitted the windows and the front door while Wendy was busy inside making a big picture for Sandy's wall. A really big and different job was building a special dome. The foundation was built of stone and concrete, but the building was made up from lots and lots of glass panels. All the panels were slotted together until the giant dome was finished. Then we had a big party with cakes and pizza and lemonade and fireworks. While we go back to the yard, why don't you watch this next film? There are three stages to building tree houses. The first stage is the foundation. The second stage is construction. The third stage is completion. Oh, hello, little truck. Come to help. We're very busy today because we're building a tree house. So don't worry. I'm sure we can find something for you to do later. Let's start with the first stage, the foundation. The foundation starts with the plans. Plans are very important because they show the builders exactly what to build. When the plans are finished, the treehouse can be built. First of all, we need to find just the right tree trunk. Next, it's hollowed out. And a hole cut into it for a door. Then the trunk is loaded onto a truck and taken on site. Now, stage two. Do you remember what that is? That's right. It's construction. <laughs> oh, hello, little truck. <laughs> I know you're ready to help, little truck, but not just yet. <laughs> I will have something for you to do soon, though. <laughs> <laughs> Next, the floor, walls and roof of the treehouse are delivered. Packer is great at delivering. Now everything is ready for the treehouse to be put together. First, it's the floor, then the walls. Then the roof is added. So now for the final stage, stage three, completion. Now Lofty can put the treehouse in place. To finish this treehouse, we're going to add a handrail and some window boxes, a swing and a fantastic slide. <laughs> Hello, little truck. Vroom. I've got a job for you. Vroom. I want you to deliver Vroom. the door knocker. Vroom. A door knocker knocks on the door to tell us someone is calling to see us. Vroom. 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 There's a lot to do when you build a tree house. Isn't there, Bob? That's right, Lofty. Do you know what the first stage is? That's right, the foundation. The first part of preparation is the design. The design is just like plans. Plans are important because they show the builders exactly what the treehouse will look like when it's built. The design starts with just a pencil drawing. Then more detail and colour are added. There, finished. It looks great, doesn't it? A trunk will make the base for the tree house. It has to come from a dead or dying tree, which means it's been recycled. Before he can start work, the builder has to put on his hard hat. He wears safety gloves and special trousers, too. These will help protect him when he's using his saw to cut up the tree trunk. Using a giant chainsaw means the tree trunk will be cut up in no time. 
Next, the saw is used to hollow out the trunk. One big push. And the job's done. That was a very good job. A forklift truck is used to move the trunk so that they can cut a hole for the door. The builder also cuts a hole for a window in the side of the trunk base. A small roof is built over the door, then the trunk is moved and made ready for the treehouse to be put on top of it. That is a great squirrel treehouse, Bob! It's not quite finished yet, Rolly. Do you remember what the second stage of building a treehouse is? That's right! It's construction! A lot of tree houses are built in a factory just like this one. This tree house is almost finished. Let's see how a tree house is made, shall we? First, some wood is selected. Then it's cut using a special saw. Every piece of wood has to be cut exactly the right size and length. This wood is being cut very carefully because saws are very sharp tools. See how the builder makes sure his hands don't get near the blade? When all the wood has been cut, the treehouse can start to be built. Every part of the treehouse is built carefully. I wonder what part this could be. Maybe it's the frame of the treehouse. I think these are railings. What do you think? This builder is starting to work on the roof. Now it really is beginning to look like a treehouse. Next, the treehouse is painted. Special paint is used called preservative. Preservative helps make the wooden treehouse waterproof. Every part is painted very carefully. Not one single centimetre is missed. Now it's time to work on the windows. They're not like ordinary windows, as you'll see. The roof has been covered in felt. Felt is a special material that will help protect it from the wind and the rain. Now, what do you think this builder is doing? He's collecting lots of wood for something. It certainly is an awful lot of wood. Hmm, I wonder. Do you think the wood might be for the roof? Yes, it is. The wood is just like the tiles you'd find on the roof of a real house. Each tile is fixed to the roof with a special nail gun. There's a lot to fit. So, we need to get a move on. Phew, that was fast. Just one more thing to fit now, the front door. This treehouse is ready for delivery. The forklift truck takes it from the factory and across the yard where a big truck is waiting. The 
treehouse is loaded onto the back of the truck. Now it's ready to be taken to its brand new home. What's next, Lofty? It's ooh, um, completion! That's right, Lofty. This treehouse has already had its roof built, but it's not ready yet. First of all, it has to be delivered on site by a big crane. The crane has to move very slowly because the treehouse is very, very heavy. The crane has lots of special levers. When the builder pulls one of the levers, the treehouse is lowered onto the tree trunk very carefully. That's it. Gently now. Ooh, ooh. It looks good. Yes, that's great. Well done. Now the builders can get to work completing the treehouse. The first job is to make the treehouse secure. The tree trunk has to be secured too. These big bolts are very strong and just right for holding the tree trunk in place. Next, the crane lifts the deck into position. The builder is busy digging a hole. Can you guess what it's for? That's right! The hole is for the wooden beams that will support the deck. The beams are then secured to the deck and the deck is secured to the treehouse. Tree houses are a lot of fun. They're brilliant places to play in. That's because they have great things like this climbing frame. Can you think of something else that would be fun to have? Yes, that's right. It's a super slide. Oops, that's the wrong way round. <laughs> Only one more piece to fix, and the slide is finished. And when that's done, the steps are put in place. Steps need a handrail to make sure they're safe to climb. This handrail is fitted, and then it's secured. The builders are working very hard to make sure everything is just right. Nearly finished now. Just a few more things to do. The windows are next. First one, then the other. Oh, that doesn't seem to fit. Oh yes, that's much better. Can you guess what this peg is for? It's for a lamp. Oh, that's not quite right. Great, that's fixed it. Wow, look at that. It's a really fun way of getting out of the treehouse. It's a fireman's pole. Just a final bit of painting to be done here. Oh, and here too. It's all complete now. The treehouse is finished. It looks fantastic, doesn't it? I'd love to see a treehouse in my garden, wouldn't you? That's 
right, Lofty. These children are going to have fun too, making a model treehouse of their own. Just watch. <laughs> Everything the children need to build a model treehouse is on the table. There are lolly sticks, glue and sticky tape. First of all, collect lots of lolly sticks. That's right, just like that. All the sticks have to be glued together. You have to do this very carefully. To make each part of the treehouse strong, the sticks should be glued together like this. Gradually, you build the treehouse little by little. You can do this on your own, but it's a lot more fun to do it with friends. That means when you're doing some tricky gluing, you have a friend there to help you. The treehouse is really starting to take shape. First, the walls are glued together. And after the floor has been made, the walls can be glued down onto it. They need to be glued very carefully along the edges. Nice and steady. Don't want to spill any glue. <laughs> oh, hello. What do you think the treehouse needs now? That's right, a tree. It's only a model treehouse, so they only need a small branch to put it in. Just one last thing now. Do you know what that is? Yes, the roof. That's a great tree house. Well done. <laughs> Those children are very clever, Bob. They are, Rolly. And now they're going to plant a tree. <laughs> Here are the children in their garden. They've got an adult to help them plant the tree. The first thing they have to do is dig a big hole. With three of them digging, it won't take long. That's it. Make the hole nice and deep. Planting a tree is a great thing to do because trees help clean the air and give us shade from the hot sun. Trees are home to lots of animals, like squirrels and birds. All sorts of things are made from trees, like cork, paper, even rubber. Would you like to plant a tree? It's a lot of fun, even though digging the hole can be hard work. Phew! Just a little more digging to do. Then everything's ready for the tree to be planted. Collect up all the spades and put them away tidily. That's right. It's a good idea to get an adult to help you carry the tree, as it can be heavy. The hole is just the right size. So can you guess what happens next? That's right! The children are going to fill in the hole around the tree with earth. They have to make sure the tree has plenty of earth around it to hold it firmly in the ground. They also have to clear away any rocks and grass so that the tree's roots are able to grow long and strong. Just two more things to do now. First, pat down the earth to make it nice and firm. That's a very good job. Finally, they're off to fetch plenty of water because trees need lots of water to help them grow. <laughs> oh, uh, trees are good things, aren't they, Bob? Yes, Lofty. Do you remember Spud liked trees so much he wanted to be one? Spud wanted to be a tree because I told him trees were very special. They gave us shade and oxygen to breathe. So Spud made himself look like a tree. He 
tied leaves to his arms and legs and stood still with the other trees in the forest. But Spud had forgotten that rabbits like trees. In fact, so do lots of animals. So when he shouted, Spud's on the job! I'm Spud the tree! First, all the rabbits, then the crows, really thought he was a tree. Oh dear, poor Spud. The rabbits and the crows made him itch and scratch. He was not enjoying being a tree at all. It's no fun, he said. I don't want to be covered in birds and rabbits. But I told him that birds and rabbits love trees. Scoop told him that trees are very important. And Scoop was right, because some animals and birds live in trees and make them their home. I don't want to be a tree, said Spud. I'd rather be a scarecrow instead. But it was too late, because the animals just loved Spud the tree. And Spud still loved trees, especially apple trees, but one apple was never enough for Spud. This time, he got more apples than he wanted. He even got one stuck to his nose. Poor Spud in a pickle once again. I think he would have preferred to be up to his neck in pizza. <laughs> now, Spud can be very noisy, so he decided to see how quiet he could be. He was going to make himself a pair of cork soles for his shoes. Cork comes from the cork tree and is very soft, so Spud's shoes would be very quiet. The shoes were a great success. Even the rabbits couldn't hear Spud coming. After all his adventures with trees, Spud now knows that planting them is a very good thing to do. He likes to help Farmer Pickles plant trees all over Sunflower Valley. That's a good job. Well done, Spud. I think we need a reminder of everything we've learned. Ready, Roly? Ready to rock and roll! On site, on site, let's go on site. To build a house up in a tree. On site, on site, oh yeah, all right. A place of fun for you and me. We take a tree we think will fit So that we can recycle it We saw it up and when that's done That's the base our house sits on On site, let's go on site Our special house is made of wood And built just right so it looks good We add fun things so you can play And run and jump and shout hooray! On site, on site, let's go on site To build a house up in a tree On site, on site, oh yeah, all right A place of fun for you and me, yeah! <laughs> Rock and roll! Would you like to live in a tree house, Rolly? Oh yeah, it'd be great! <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed learning about tree houses and that you'll come back and see us soon. Bye, everyone.